Welcome, everyone. Are you listening to The Last Dinosaur? And I'm your host, Chris Aversano. On today's podcast, we have Sandra Enner, CEO of Transparency Fuels. Sandy is also president of the Connecticut Maritime Association. In today's episode of Tell Me More Tuesday, we're going to talk about what a bunker broker does, why they are important, and a bit about the future of the bunker broking business. Sandy, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank, well, thanks for coming on. And, and I love your podcast. I'll include a link, uh, Fueled Thoughts. I love, it because, I love it because it's it's short and to the point. I, I know that's something that I struggle with. You could laugh. Sandy's probably <laughs> laughing a lot because uh, her and I were on the board of the CMA together. Uh, and the CMA is in much better hands than it was uh, just a year ago when I was the president. So uh, we could talk about that in a minute. So what I always like to ask to tell me more Tuesday is, why are you an expert in today's topic besides the fact that you own your own bunker brokering business? Well, I would say that's because of what led me to owning my own bunker brokerage business. I've been in bunkers since 2007. Uh, I started as a broker. Then I moved to the buy side um, and I was a buy, a hybrid buyer and trader. Uh, and then I moved to the supply side. Um, so a hybrid supplier trader. And uh, in 2017, I thought there was a good gap in the market for another pure independent broker model. So that's when I started Transparency Fuels. So I've been doing this for 13 years now, more than that, 16 years. Gosh, that's a long time. It doesn't seem like that. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that as, at all. So there is a slight difference. You were on the supply side as well as, as the, I guess, the, the, the demand side, right? So you were kind of on both sides of it. Yes. And then also on the intermediary side, the trading side. So that's really interesting because that's the, a part of, you know, people who listen to the podcast or know me, like as your ship broker, you're just a ship broker, right? You're always in the middle here. It seems like you've did a, did a lot, which brings a lot uh, to the table. Um, so tell us a little bit about, about what you do today as a, as a pure uh, sure. bunker broker, as a pure, like you said, uh, n none of the other stuff there. Sure. So the primary function of a bunker broker is arranging for and coordinating the delivery of marine fuel. So what is going into your fuel tanks that drives you from point A to point B? Um, the outside of that, the extra stuff uh, outside of arranging for the fuel delivery is handling credit for customers with the suppliers, making sure they have ample credit, um, doing the ops follow-up once the delivery is scheduled, making sure that the delivery goes smoothly, that everybody's the supplier and the agent and the vessel and the operator are all on the same um, track because I think we all know that shipping always changes. Claims handling is the other piece of the, of the puzzle. When you do have a claim or a problem with a bunker delivery, a bunker broker, a good bunker broker should be able to assist you through that process. And then, you know, the other thing that we do for our customers is a lot of reporting, benchmarking, trends information gathering, price indications, port updates. So all of the things that help an operator or a bunker buyer uh, make the best decision on where they're going to lift their fuel and why. And I think one of the other pieces too, that that kind of differs from what I, I did that kind of at the tanker side and really on the dirty tanker side, and even narrowing that down Atlantic basin tankers, you know, dirty tankers of a certain size that you guys will deliver to whomever your clients are, right? So I'm sure that bunker brokers like yourself, you'll have a, a, a you know a dry bulk client, a wet client, cruise ships, right? It's the whole gamut. Absolutely, we, we're seeing we see different types of ships and in all over the world. So it's not just even regional. Um, you know, if somebody has a ship in Singapore or Karachi, uh, we can help um, brokers. Uh, and what we do is arrange for fuel and wherever the ships might be. Yeah. And that seems to be one of the interesting things. Also the credit part, which is uh, at least on the tanker side seems to be a little bit more foreign, right? I mean, that's, that's a huge part of what your business uh, has to do, especially with, you know, where, where there's kind of a lot of unknowns or smaller operators. Absolutely. And it's, and it goes both ways too, because it's not just small operators or charters that are purchasing fuel. There's a lot of small independent suppliers. So it's about vetting the suppliers, mm. making sure that the KYC is mutually done so that way you're not putting together people or, or companies that don't operate on the same with the same priorities so that's the other piece of that as well i mean you figure bunkers probably run the entire industry about 150 billion dollars a year 
So it's not a small amount of financing because everybody wants to pay on 30 days from when they lift the fuel. So if you think about that, you know, it's not like when you go into a mall and you buy a sweater, you pay for that right then. You know, you're 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 sailing away with a million dollars worth, million to two million dollars worth of fuel on your ship. And then with the, hey, I promise to pay you in 30 days. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because not even, you know, well, I guess freight would be the closest because you have to bring the freight, but then you you have three days to pay it. So that's a little different. But yeah, you know, you have a fleet of 10, 15 ships. You could have five, 10, 15 million dollars of outstanding uh, bunker you know, invoices out there at any given time, at least, you exactly. know, that's a small, exactly. that's a small fleet. Right. You know, and then to talk about the different uh, bunker sizes, what, what are, as you, as you kind of look at your role, you know, what are some of the challenges that you, that a bunker broker will face and kind of today and, and, and where, where do you see it going? So as everybody knows, there's the push to net zero, you know, being, carbon neutral by 2030. So what that is bringing to the landscape is a whole bunch of new fuels. Um, And there's a lot of misinformation or what I call people living by the press release Mm. sort of in the business right now. So what we're spending a lot of time on is helping not only to educate ourselves as a team on new fuels, what are they actually going to look like? What are the handling characteristics? How do we go about procuring those, but also helping advise our customers on the regulations. So that's a little bit outside of what I think the traditional core business of a bunker broker does. But I think it's totally critical when you're talking about everybody's buying the same three types of fuel right now, right? So like a high sulfur fuel oil, a low sulfur fuel oil, and some sort of a gas oil or a distillate. You're going to, that landscape is going to become increasingly more technical and niche as we move towards 2030. I think with that comes the credit is con- we're constantly working on credit with price volatility. I mean, um, if as the prices go up, people's available credit lines with suppliers sh- diminishes. So you have to make sure that you're constantly, or we make sure that we're constantly making sure that our customers are paying their bunker bills on time, which is critical to maintaining or keeping your credit lines open. And then also making sure that you have a diverse panel of credit providers. So you're never in a situation where, you run out of credit with one with one trader or supplier, and then you can't purchase fuel. You have to pay cash. With the price volatility and how it impacts credit, I think the other piece of that is just what's the best timing for people to book their fuel? So sometimes waiting a day, if you can operationally, if the avails are good in a port, could save you a lot of money. I mean, we were seeing price swings between the morning and the afternoon over the last year, between a fifty to sixty dollars a metric ton. That's significant it, it, in either direction that it moves. With also what the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine has taught us all uh, is about product origin, vetting of suppliers, and making sure that we're in compliance with sanctions. Uh, and that goes on both sides too. Making sure that a ship is not uh, if you're if you're talking about a sanctioned nation. Um, or a supplier or a company that you are not putting your suppliers or your customers at risk by having some inadvertent sanctioned product in the supply chain. So I see those as sort of like the big things that are uh, impacting what bunker brokerage is going to look like, you know, for the next seven, 12 years, 13 years. And I think that one of the other things to build along to that, or actually goes in, 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 more to your first point about the differing fuels is sort of what we saw. Uh, I think it was about four or five years ago. I think right, right, kind of after you got into business in two, I think it was two thousand and eighteen when you went uh, on your own there with, with the corrupted supply, right? Where you had Absolutely. that issue in the U.S. And, and I, and I, yeah, <laughs> and, and then that permeated all throughout the world, right? You had ships breaking down, all, you know, not all over the place, but there was it wasn't just regional because of the way that traded, that's also got to be something that's going to be more and more important is the quality of fuel, especially as you start to, as you mentioned before, look at alternative fuels, whether that's, you know, you see, you know, some more on the bio side, um, you really got to pick through and make sure you have a, re, you know, a supplier that's going to stand by, you know, their fuels and, and and be able to give you, you know, you always say they give you the right specs, but give you enough details to make informed decisions. Well, exactly. And I think, um, the movement and the cleaning up of the carbon and the sulfur is a good opportunity uh, for the industry as a whole to 
sort of clean up their business practices and be really specific about product origin, quality of product, and guarantee those things. So I think it's a good opportunity um, to make sure that everybody knows what they're getting and where it came from. And that, and like you said, that the supplier is going to stand by their product. You know, the, the net's going to be moving constantly, right? I mean, I don't need to yes. tell you that, but I, I think because of that and because suppliers are going to try to figure the the fastest way to to help people get to that. And the, and the industry is going to demand it. You always have to keep an eye on that supply and, and make sure that it, it not only complies, but doesn't leave you in the lurch, you know, 500 miles off the coast of, of Mexico when, when you decide to switch tanks, which is kind exactly. of what happened, right? I mean, that's what happened to ships, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, No, it did. The, the amount of nights that I had a phone call in the middle of the night that a ship had broken down made me really question why I had started my own company and what I was doing. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> Jeez, <going> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I could definitely appreciate that as a small business owner. And you, I, yeah, I get a lot of respect there because i don't know if i could do well i don't know if i could deal with the headaches although i did deal with some headaches as a ship broker you deal with, you know, <laughs> with those sort of things on a on a on a on a you know on a closer level uh real quick yeah. i mentioned that you are the president of the cma uh i am going to drop this right around the cma anything you want to tell people who are listening um you know because i think i'm going to drop this on day one of the cma anything you'd like to share sure. yeah sure come out you can get a one-day pass uh the exhibit booths are 98% full. Uh, there's going to be lots of folks coming in from Houston and from Europe. Uh, we're going to be celebrating the uh, D'Amico cousins as our Commodores, our co-Commodores this year. The whole conference is about collaboration for transition. And in order to collaborate, we need people to show up and talk to people and um, share your ideas. Uh, that's a good, this is a great forum to bring um, a lot of folks back together uh, here in Stanford. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it'll be great. And I know that you guys had a, just recently had an outreach down in Houston, which sounded like it went really well. I think you did that with uh, ASBA and um, and the Baltic. So that sounded like it went really well. So, well, good luck. I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, I, I will be uh, uh, moderating a, one or two panels. So I look forward to that. So hopefully I'll see the folks there. And uh, a, any last yeah, sure. words? Uh, one of the things I always love, any last words about people who would like to get into the industry? Yes, no, run away. You talked about sleepless nights, but you sound pretty, uh, <laughs> you sound like you're pretty happy with everything there. Yeah, no, I think, I think uh, being in shipping right now is a really exciting place to be, especially since it, you know, there is a huge connection to energy, which let's face it, the, you know, whether you're in shipping or on the energy side, uh, there's lots of development and changes going on. And I think, you know, shipping in maritime is not only a great social place to be, but is on the forefront of a lot of technology changes. So get in it. It's great. Uh, absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of room here for a lot of different people, even if you're not a shipping person. I mean, just from my exactly. side now, I'm on the, you know, more of the tech side and there, there's a lot of room here and, and uh, I, I think it's pretty exciting time. So Sandy, yeah. thank you for coming great. on the podcast. I do appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Thanks, Chris. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Bunker broking is a key part of our industry and one whose role is going to be more important in this day and age of know your counterparty and changing environmental regulations. Don't forget to leave a five-star review and follow the podcast. So you're notified of new shows. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Aversano, wishing you all fair winds and following seas.